All right, guys. Uh, I want to speak to you guys about speaking in tongues. Okay. There's been a, a, always an, a, a discussion about this whole tongue thing, right? Should people use it? Should people be doing it? And I'm going to tell you through experience. We're going to get into the word in Corinthians 14. Paul teaching the church of Corinth. Tongues is not something, but I'm going to tell you that most of these chauvinistic pastors and preachers and false prophets with a FIT uh, will use that to try to tickle the flesh of people and make people think that, oh my God, he just spoke in tongue. Oh my, I got to give him all my mortgage. But people, when they learn it, and it's a spiritual gift, when you learn it, people just start using it everywhere. And, you know, it's the, it's, it's the worst thing I've ever seen. People get out here and they want to call themselves teaching and all of a sudden they want to break out and speak in the tongue and then go back to speaking English like. And I'm thinking because I know better, I'm thinking, why would you why? Why do you why are you doing that? What's what's the point? Nobody understands what you're saying. So what's the point? Why you do it? OK. So. Let me get into. This this situation here on tongues, because. I want to give you my interpretation of it because I know how to pray in tongues, but I, I, it, you're not supposed to be doing that publicly. And Paul explains this, okay? He explains this mightily, okay? Now, let's start it. This is 1 Corinthians 14. Let's start at 18. Let me make sure because there was a, a specific spot that I wanted to get to. But let's start at 18. He says this, and it says, I thank God. My God, I speak with tongues more than you all. Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding, comma, that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an untongue, unknown tongue. It's a gift, but it's not to be used as a braggadocious gift. Paul said, I would rather speak five words to you in regular in regular language that you understand in your native tongue, then start babbling off 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Let's keep going. Verse 20, brethren, be not, be not children in understanding. Okay. Brethren, verse 20, be not children in understanding. How be it in malice, be ye children but in understanding be men. Paul is saying, it's kind of back to what I was reading in 13 about when I was a child. We do childish things, but when you become a, an adult, you put away childish things. Okay? In the law, verse 21, in the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet for all that, will they not hear me, says the Lord? Wherefore tongues are for sign. It's for a sign. Okay. Wherefore tongues are for a sign. Not to them that believe. But to, the, but to them that believe not. Why would that be? Tongues is not for, this is what Paul is saying. Tongues are for a sign. Not to them that believe, but to them that do not believe. Because if you know me, or you, you know, you know what I'm, if, if you know a person and all of a sudden you hear them speak in this different language, and you've been knowing them for a, a, a little while. You're like, what was that? And they're not a believer. And you tell them, I was praying in the spirit. And what, what that would do is cause curiosity. It's a sign for people who do not believe. And you say, well, how did you? I said, you would tell them it's a gift from the Holy Spirit. Okay. But to them that believe not, it's a sign. But prophesying and serve not. For them that believe not, but for them which do believe. 
Let's do that one more time. Wherefore tongues are for a sign, but not for people who believe, but for people who do not believe. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not. It's no good to prophesy to people that don't believe. You're just wasting your time. The prophesying serves for those who do believe. If therefore the whole church be come together in one place, and I've witnessed this on more than one occasion, and if you got a good pastor, he'll shut it down, okay? And all speak with tongues. Let's say the whole church in there blabbling off in spirit, just, just tonguing everything out, right? And there come in those that are unlearned. What's going on up in here? Now, remember the day of Pentecost when Holy Ghost came down and everybody was speaking in, uh, in, a, in a different tongue. But there were some there who understood. Other people who walked in like, wait a minute. These people are drunk in the noonday. Said, no, they're drunk in the spirit and they're speaking in the spirit. I've seen this at churches I've been to. Some that, I've, that I was uh, uh, ordained in and, and given authority to function. You would have a bunch of people in there speaking in tongues. Where, now, here's the problem. When you walk up in a place like that, if you are in touch with the Spirit, you will know this is a spiritual event. Something spiritual is in the atmosphere. And people are touched in the Spirit. As my mama say, they were slain in the Spirit. Drunk in the Spirit, right? And you will speak in tongues. It's, it's nothing that you can control. It just cut. You hear it in your, and you hear it on the inside and it wants to come out, but the flesh suppresses that. A lot of people have been given the gift of tongues, but when you go to pray and you are slain in the spirit, if your flesh will battle you on that and it will not allow you to speak in tongues out loud because the flesh can not understand that. And then that also that tongue is secret in prayer to the Most High, which breaks through the defense of the uh, of, of those who are sent on assignment to block our prayers and the spirit as they go up. OK. So if they walk in, as verse 23 says, and they're unlearned or unbelievers, they're going to look around as, as scripture say, these people are mad. But if all prophesy and there come in one that believe not or one unlearned, he is convinced of all. He is judged of all. But if all prophet, but if all prophesy and there comes a person in that believes not or unlearned, he is convinced of all. He is is judged of all, okay? 24, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. How is this then, brethren, when you come together? Every one of you has a psalm has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation, has interpretation. Let all things be done unto the edification. I would not knock another person if I couldn't do their gift. Okay. That's kind of like the, the, the problem that we have now. A lot of people are giving gifts, but they don't want to use their gift because they're looking at other people. And some people in the ministry, they do showboat. Okay. They do come in haughty because they think that they're holier than thou because they know how to do a certain thing or they know they've been gifted and they let that gift go to their ego. Okay. That's just all. That's just high. That's that's humanality, folks. As soon as you think you bad, as soon as you think you sweet, your whole attitude gets cocked up. Okay. You start walking around tooted up because I sound spiritual. I sound holy. I sound, okay? But sometimes you really might not be. 
you just got the gift and you sound that way. But what's happening in the inside? What's happening when ain't nobody around? What kind of uh, 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 fruit are you producing? If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three. And that by course and let one interpret. So if you are going to do it, and this was the this was the instructions in church. I was always under under the understanding that tongues is a private prayer. But if you get in public, as the Bible say, and people just start blah, 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 and they just start tonguing their prayers out, right? I'm not going to do it here because it's not appropriate because you wouldn't understand it. I don't even understand it. But there is a power behind it, okay? I may not be feeling well one day at work, and I might lay my lay hands on my back or wherever's hurting and start praying in the spirit. And I'm telling you, in a matter of minutes, the pain goes away. Verse 27, if a man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or three, that by course, let one interpret. There should be one person. If it's if it's uh, uh, right in spirit and true, there should be one person that God would bless, and they will, and I've seen this before. One person will stand up, especially on a Friday night service, and 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 gone in the spirit. And they'll just for me, I can hear. For me, I'm just I'm I'm just saying. There are times when I heard people speak in tongue. I said, "Oh, you full of it." That's not. There are other times when I heard people speak in spirit, and I'm like, "Oh." something was said because you can feel it and then if there's something was said i've seen before some random person would jump up and god would give them the interpretation they would spit it out loud and then the whole church would be quiet somebody spoke in tongue the other person any i mean it just whoever god decides to touch boop and then they stand up and they and they interpret the tongue and some people get a blessing right out of it okay but if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to him. See, tongues is for yourself. It is not to be blabbered out like a scoreboard. Speak to yourself and to God. Okay. Church is out of order for real. I, I'm not even going to hold you and keep it a buck with you, as they say today. That's one of the reasons why I got out of it, because people would get in here and get the rambling off and want to speak in tongues. And do it every day, uh, not every day, but every Sunday and in every Bible study, every service on the front. And then you saying the same thing. And then you had the nerve to interpret the tongue yourself, which is out of character. The Bible don't never say that. Because if you speak it, you speak in tongues. We have people, I've seen people where they're going to speak in tongue. And then after they're done speaking in tongue, then they want to turn around and interpret what they said. That's not how that works. It is a spiritual language. And the Bible says it needs to be two to three. And out of one of those people that is not doing the talking in, in, in tongues, one of them ought to, ought to be able to interpret with the gift of interpretation. All gifts work together. Okay. And that's been the problem for a long time. Some people take these gifts and they abuse them because they think, oh, I'm righteous and I'm just I'm just all of that in the bag of funions and I'm just going to do it every and and no. Now it becomes fleshly, it's not spiritual. Okay. Let the prophets speak two or three and let their and let the others judge. If anything be revealed to to another that sit by, let uh the first hold his peace. These are instructions and I used to bring these up in private meetings and auxiliary meetings and people didn't want to hear. Okay. For ye may all prophesy one by one, by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. And the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of diffusion, confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. So when you have this confusion in the church, it ain't got nothing to do with God. That's man. And they're... So, supposed interpretation and what they think. Okay. Tongue. This is a very important subject, folks, because a lot of people ask this question 
And they say, well, I guess I'm not saved because I don't have the evidence of speaking in tongues. It's a gift, right? The same way y'all want to holler, it's a gift and I can never lose it. <laughs> Your life is a gift. That's the most important thing. You breathing air, heart beating, walking around, that's a gift. And it can be lost. If you ain't, if you're not living right, your life can be lost. By what? An accident. Folks, this is not a place that we were meant to hang out forever. This is only a pit stop in this afterlife that we're living now. Okay? It's a gift. And because, well, they told me, I heard, and I... It's a gift. I just read it to you earlier. You can be saved. You can be touched by the Holy Ghost. You can have a moment with God. You can have an outer body experience, dance, and slain in the spirit. Not everybody uh, gets the gift. It's just a gift of speaking in the spirit. But if you truly want it, you have to go to God in private and prayer and ask for it. I wanted it. I asked for it. This was years ago, before my ordination. And uh, at that time, that church was off the hook before the head of the church started going down and took a lot of people with him. These are the kind of ministries that are missing today that actually teach and learn people. All of these churches, a lot of churches today are showboat churches. Okay. We got a great instrument section, great choir. You know, we look good in our deacon out and our deacons uh, uh, dress well and our and our ushers, you know. But that's all appearance. Okay. The problem is holiness. A lot of things look like holiness, but they're really not. And that's the problem, folks. That's the problem. Uh, and we're so confused about what we should and shouldn't be doing. The Bible never has told you, I just read it to you, never said that speaking in tongues was a bad thing. The bad thing about speaking in tongues is doing it in front of people who are not believers or everybody doing it and then there's no interpretation. So whatever was said in the spirit, it's wasted because nobody can get it unless there's somebody interpreting. Just because you know how to speak it, the Bible never says the same person that spoke the tongue can turn around and interpret it. No, they can't. You're a liar. Bible never said, I just read it to you. The Bible never, and people believe that. Oh, I, since I can speak it, I do also have the, do you? Are we out of order? That was my problem in church. Are we out of order? How you gonna get up every Sunday and, and, and ramble off and then turn around and then give the answer to the question that you get? That's cheating. It's the Bible. Paul said, through the unctioning of God, if there's going to be a person that speaks it, there's got to be another person to interpret it. Okay? And that's why, and that's the out of orderness that is in church today. Not just with this particular matter, but with a lot of stuff. Now, think about them unbelievers that are coming into the church and they see this foolishness. Either they're going to walk out Oh, these people up in here are crazy. They off that stuff like they did at Pentecost. Or they're going to sit down and watch and still be confused and not really understand what's going on. And a lot of times you get these new people in here and they try to ask questions and don't nobody want to answer them. And so they get pushed to the back and then all the way to, to the point to where they get pushed all the way out the door. And they don't never come back or they don't never go to a church at all. One bad experience in a church situation can ruin a person they'll never want to go back they'll never want to get right with god because they had a bad situation or they'll turn and become a hebrew dumbalite and get into all this division and racism and start pointing the finger so if we're going to understand what's going on in the church and what these gifts are go back to the scripture folks and read it and see look it up all of our answers are in there they're not in some book that you buy from Amazon about somebody that wrote a book about the Bible. I'm not going to read a book that you wrote about the Bible when I can read myself and I'm going to go to the Bible and read it. 
I'm not going to read your opinion about the Bible because I know good and well you didn't took some garlic powder out of it. You didn't took some onion powder out of it that should have been in there. And then you added in your own seasoning. And so it don't have the same taste, the same flavor. But people will go and do these things because it's a cheat code because they don't want to have to take the time to study to show themselves approved. Let's just go off of what somebody wrote a book about the Bible and a certain subject matters in the book instead of asking Holy Ghost. Where does your help come from? It come from the Lord, not from man, not from uh, uh, the world. Don't be like the five dumb and run back to the world to get an understanding. If you pray about it, God will send another godly person your way that will point you in the right direction. Okay, we cannot take watered down substitutes. Can't do it. Then that goes back into it, that indoctrination, folks. I'll talk to you in another one. Peace. Let this message be a blessing to you. Deuces.